there's always patterns in my life, and almost all of my paintings have some autobiographical context. artists were dealing with reality, uh, meaning Coca-Cola bottles and, and uh, Marilyn Monroe and refrigerators and Volkswagens. And uh, I, I never got involved in that aspect of pop. I was really always on the fringe of pop in the first place. And I don't think the other pop artists really thought I was a, a legitimate member of their inner circle and of, and of course I was excluded from the from the inner circle but uh, because I was influenced my neighbor and the and the person who brought me to Quinty Slip was Ellsworth Kelly Kelly was very much a hard-edged painter and uh, for some time I was simply known as a hard edge artist and and that would have been the most accurate because I am a hard edge artist I don't have any soft edges you see my life is an endless uh, meeting of colliding circles. Things just keep repeating themselves over and over. Last summer I realized that my mother had been dead for 50 years. She was born, by the way, in August. And of course she uh, uh, worked and ran her own restaurant, which is why the word eat is in plum. Eight happens to be the past tense of eat, so there seems to be a, a logical tie. Then uh, August is bittersweet. This is a line from the poem that I wrote about my mother's death when I was a student in Scotland at Edinburgh. August is bittersweet memory, hot month, death reeks as it will reek in an Indiana autumn. August brought you August takes you, heat becomes you, take the hot grave well, Carmen, August is memory. What have I learned about love? It's a dangerous commodity, fraught with peril <laughs> on several different levels. Let, let's say love stands apart from uh, from most of my uh, work, true, it is, a, it is a word. Most of my paintings are about words. Certainly, it cannot be denied, uh, I am a sign painter. And we all know that the first artists in America, going back to colonial times, they were either portraitists or they were sign painters. And uh, to me, sign painting seemed to be very relevant to the American scene, whereas one certainly never, never felt that in Europe whatsoever. The biggest step for me and the most uh, uh, important step was simply uh, deciding that the word was a fit element for art, and uh, that didn't please Ellsworth Kelly at all, and uh, subsequently hasn't pleased lots of people. I mean, uh, I'm still meeting that resistance to uh, canvases with words. Now, of course, there are many painters who have made use of words, but at that time it was not exactly what people were looking for. My first room in New York was seven dollars a week. Uh, so therefore, I couldn't, you know, this was the era of abstract expressionism, and that meant working very large and dripping all over the place and doing all kinds of things which I couldn't afford. I couldn't afford that much paint, I couldn't afford that much canvas. But I would go out at night and steal these uh, wooden columns and these beams from the demolition sites. And uh, since a beam is, uh, so wide, I could only get a three or four letter word on the beams. This is how I began because I didn't have any, any money. Now that, now that I can afford a canvas, then I, then I uh, go to things like the Eighth Dream. I started writing poetry when I was in high school, and now the very first poem that I wrote is on my latest canvas, uh, October is in the Wind. In fact, it's published on October the 24th, 1945, October. October is in the wind, and the wind has a Midian finger, for the brown leaves are gilt leaves, 
and the hills are piles of gold. October is in my heart, and my heart is so yearning to linger in autumn hills, those golden hills, and to count my treasure there. I was really very reluctant to deal with the theme of Marilyn because of the fact that Andy had covered the subject so extensively. So I held off for a long time. And then one day in the village, in an antique shop, uh, I found this calendar, which of course is the calendar, the very famous calendar. These were the shots that Hugh Hefner used for the uh, cover, the first issue of, uh, of uh, Playboy. And uh, when I turned the calendar over, lo and behold, what it said was printed in Indiana. So that was too much. I, I just forgot all of my reservations and uh, plowed ahead with my first Marilyn Monroe painting, which was done. I found this in 66, the year of my love show at the Stable Gallery. In 67, I did the Marilyn canvas. Marilyn rested for uh, many, many years, and then recently she came to the surface again like a true mermaid, the seductress that she is. Along came that big story in Washington, and I realized there was another love goddess connected with our beloved president. And since this Marilyn was metamorphosing back into a brunette, and since there is another brunette love goddess, why, everything just came together, you see. I had left a window open up on the third floor, and apparently that water had come all the way down, came out that little crack, didn't leave any stain on the crack, didn't leave any stain on the wall, but came right down her. So therefore, obviously, the descent of a love goddess in this case refers to more than one presidential mistress, you see. Pelvic and bright. Pelvic and bright, the rose I hold athwart my thighs. So red blooms bold for summer's sighs. Sweet loves behold, let crown the skies in centric throne, the rose I've grown. <laughs>